let's uh, move on to Starmer's. Um, he's living the life of Liberace. Now, for those that don't know Liberace, very grand man with a big piano, uh, wore lots of gold. And uh, Sir Keir Starmer, I think, is trying to mimic the man. So this is the extent of the free shit that he's had as party leader. Uh, £100,000 in tickets and gifts more than any other recent party leader. Let's not forget, my friends, that this is a man who stood up in Parliament and uh, criticised Boris Johnson by saying... Minister, the Prime Minister will be aware that he's required to declare any benefits that relate to his political activities, including loans or credit arrangements, within 28 days. 28 days, Prime Minister, yes. He will also know that any donation must be recorded in the register of ministers' interests and that under the law, any donation of over £500 to a political party must be registered and declared. So the rules are very clear. The Electoral Commission now think that there are reasonable grounds to suspect that an offence or offences may have occurred. That's incredibly serious. Yeah, well, it's not so serious for you. You know, exactly, yeah. So all this stuff, you know, he stood up in the House of Commons, he said all of that. Uh, they were speaking about the fact that um, uh, Dominic Cummings, as I said earlier, Dominic Cummings got that pay boost uh, as a uh, advisor to the Prime Minister, but then when Sue Gray gets paid more than the Prime Minister, well, guess what? Labour are silent as church mice. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the fact that one of the stats that stood out to me wasn't the fact that uh, Mrs. Starmer, Victoria Sponge, uh, actually had uh, two goes, rolls of the dice for Taylor Swift tickets. She went twice, not once, but twice in hospitality. But it was this stat. I don't, I'll, I'll try to zoom in so you can get it uh, on your screens. This here. Can you read that? Oh, wow. Yeah. Glasses valued at £2,485. What the fuck are the glasses made out of? Solid gold. I mean... <laughs> James I'm, Bond. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> flabbergasted by this. I, I find it absolutely extraordinary. So I was struck by all of that. And uh, Angela Eagle struggled to actually defend, uh, who's one of the government ministers. And then... Um, on the Sue Gray point, Nigel, well, Nigel Adams had a list who was a former government minister. He said 175000 per annum salary for Sue Gray, cash for access for Lord Ali, who brought him all of this shit, £100,000 in freebies, parliamentary rules broken, free, free clobber and those very expensive glasses. Uh, robbing pensioners of a fuel allowance so thousands will go cold. Quite an achievement in his first 75 days, even for a greedy hypocrite. And I thought, yes, go on you. Uh, Robert Jenrick, one of the Conservative leadership contenders, said £20,000 yeah, pay rise for Sue Gray, £600 cuts for some pensioners on as little as £13,000 a year. Starmer's hypocrisy reeks because Starmer had tweeted this. <laughs> £40,000 per year ri a pay rise for Dominic Cummings, £3.50 per week for NHS nurses. The mask has slipped. Well, I tell you what, the mask has slipped with you well and truly, and the golden glasses have slipped from your sneering hypocritical face, Sir Starmer. But it gets worse, my friends, it gets worse. I found this absolutely oh. extraordinary. Arsenal. He says they argue on ITV... The Prime Minister has been given a corporate box by Arsenal as a gift. Starmer will have to declare it in Parliament's register, which, with boxes advertised as costing at least £8,750 a game, per game. Every single game that he attends will be worth that sum. That's almost £10,000, right? So that £100,000 figure will be insignificant by the time he finishes in the next five years. He's going to look something like, I don't know, uh, Philip Green. So... Tim Shipman said uh, from the Times, he said, some previous prime ministers sat in the stands. The security situation may well be acute for Starmer, but politicians normally accept a seat in the director's box rather than a whole commercial box to themselves. Well, I guess Vicky Sponge needs somewhere to lay her fur coat as she's in there <laughs> watching the game. And this is what the Arsenal box looks like. So he's got this whole thing to himself, right? That's a Starmer's box. 
And I thought, well, I remember a certain prime minister who was a fan of Southampton going to St. Mary's and he was pictured very much in the stand. Now, I've got a lot to say about Rishi Sunak, but you can't fault him there, right? He didn't uh, demand his own box, maybe because Southampton would have told him to piss off. But regardless, the fact of the matter is, I think they're milking it for all it's worth. But they said they were the, the candidates for change. Their Labour Party conference, which is coming up in uh, next week, at their conference, they're going to have slogans. They decided this at the political cabinet the other day. Change. Change. That's going to be their slogan. Change. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> will, it, will it be change well, question exactly. mark? As in, have you got exactly. any change? Come on, well, pensioners, exactly cough up. Barren. I've got coats, I've got bags, I've got glasses to be buying, I've got Arsenal tickets, I need a shift. Come on, get shift in that change. I'm just, I'm disgusted by the whole thing. He's a rank hypocrite, Alex. Yeah, well, you, you nailed it with the change. You, they might as well put British pounds and become UKIP on top of it and just say, "Give us your, give us your spare change." I mean, it's literally mm -hmm. what they want. They want to, they want to rob you. They, this is the most. This is austerity on turbo. I mean, they, even George Osborne couldn't have come up with these policies so quickly. I think it took the Tory government six months to start uh, putting austerity measures in. But you know, they are just typical champagne socialists who say whatever it takes to get into government and then show their true hypocritical colours as soon as mm. they're in there. In fact, this prime minister has had more than any party leader has since the last uh, since the last parliament, which says a lot about Keir Starmer himself. And then you've got people like David Lammy, who can't even wear a pair oh, of shoes God. properly, and Angela Rayner, <laughs> Angela Rayner, who wears bin bags for, for a dress. But also, <laughs> let's not forget, Angela Rayner took money from Lord Ali too. She got money from Lord Ali to, to dress herself properly, and she still couldn't even manage that. I mean, they do say that money doesn't buy class, and that's quite clearly true. But, you know, mm -hmm. this whole government stinks of cronyism. It stinks of hypocrisy. And I put my bottom dollar on the fact that this government will be out in 2029 on its arse, and it will be sent to the trash bin of history. I'm more confident even before about that, that now, actually. I'm more confident about that. But Chloe, yeah. what about this? Did you see this? Angela Rayner in 2021 tweeted, what right does a man who complains he can't live on £150,000 a year, by the way, that salary's gone up, uh, £150,000 a year, and ask Tory donors to fund his luxury wallpaper habit, have to lecture someone trying to survive on £80 a week? Well, the luxury wallpaper habit was declared. Boris Johnson paid for it. He paid it back. Mm. Uh, it was declared and all the rest of it. All of this about clothing and glasses and they're taking the Michael. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they are such, such hypocrites. I mean, they think that we're all just going to forget what they said in the past. You know, we can, as you've clearly done here, we can scroll back on people's uh, uh, Twitter accounts. And, you know, I think there's uh, there, there is often the place for people to change their opinions on things. So I don't always like when someone goes back and says, aha, you had a different opinion 10 years ago. How dare you change it? But I really don't think that's the case. I think it's sort of, uh, you know, they're very happy to shout at other people, but they don't expect the same rules to apply to themselves. Now, you know, clearly it's not just Keir Starmer that's a huge hypocrite. It's Angela Rayner as well, not just on this. But remember that when we had um, the reaching of lockdown rules by Boris and his chums, she was out there saying to the press, um, anyone who has broken the law, they should resign immediately. You cannot be in a position um, as a politician if you've broken the law. But then as soon as she was found breaking the law with all her houses and her electoral register and whatnot, um, and all the fire was on her, she wasn't resigning. The rule doesn't apply to her, apparently. Mm. Yeah, Eunice. Exactly. You know, I call them champagne socialists, but also they are crony capitalists because they are just such lying, pathetic establishment politicians. Like they lie their way into power. And then when they get to power, they're the most corrupt, you know. And, you know, Keir Starmer for me, like ticks all the boxes. He's a communist. And also he's like kind of a extremely corrupt crony capitalist because you know in communism usually one person takes all the money and everyone else is starving and that's kind of actually what's happening with this government and i just don't know why people still trust career 
politicians, establishment politicians, because they lie through their teeth all the time. I just think Kirstam has no charisma. I was watching him during the debates. He can't talk, and yet he's still got 10 million votes. I just don't understand what people see in these people and how they can be so naive to think that these people, once they get into power, they're going to do something for them. And now they're in power. You can see that they're doing the absolute opposite. They're getting boxes at Arsenal. They're getting pay rises. They're getting gifts. And they're just being hypocrites. And I just really hope that people wake up soon. Uh, absolutely. But people well, people didn't mm. because they saw anything in him. Like we've seen the stats on this where people have been polled, and mm. the huge main reason why people voted for Labour was just because they weren't the Tories. They didn't really yes. know anything about Keir Starmer, yeah. who the government. Was but then why not vote for reform then? Well, I tell, yeah. I tell you what. The, 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 mm. the reason why well, people didn't vote for reform was because Nazi. Yeah. Reform. Alex, mm. what did you say? Yeah, I mean. Uh, look, I was just going to say, I mean, look, pe people were fed up with the Tories because things had got bad and people saw that things weren't changing. And, you know, what do you do then? You, you, I mean, let's actually let's just clarify one thing. People didn't vote for Labour. Labour's vote share stayed and dropped from 2019. So there weren't new voters going to Labour. They were existing people who already voted for Labour. Nothing changed. What happened was the Tory confidence collapsed. And we're already seeing that happen this early on into this government. We're already seeing the, the confidence in Keir Starmer collapsing. Even Carol Vorderman's had to lock down her Twitter account because she realises she made a grave mistake. I'm seeing online yeah. constantly yeah. Labour Party yeah. members returning their memberships because this was not the government they thought it was. This is the Tories on turbo. The yeah. um, SMG on YouTube says, I feel sorry for the Gooners, which is Arsenal. And I have to agree. Yeah. Uh, you're watching that ugly mug staring down at you with his expensive glasses. Anyway, uh, the uh, Sue Gray uh, cut Tory SPAD allowances. So SPADs are special advisors within government. And uh, they advise ministers on, well, policy and all the rest of it. And media appearances now sue gray cut the tory ones right but as soon as she's got in she's given herself the highest ever spad yeah. salary highest ever spad salary right mm -hmm. and then they talk right. to us about change what's the change again change question mark you got any come on like Oliver obama Twist. said the same thing though please sir can obama. i have some more yeah, Obama said the same thing back in 2008 and he said oh i'm the change candidate but obama was probably the biggest establishment candidate that there was you know trump was actually the change candidate but i feel like these career politicians they always come up with these new slogans oh i'm the change candidate now kamala harris is saying that in america i'm the change candidate no you're not you've been in power for the last three and a half years you know and unfortunately because of like the mainstream media so many people are so still so naive and they fall for you know establishment career politicians and that's just the unfortunate truth uh, right. So uh, what to just to reiterate what Alex was saying uh, on them being a one term government, I, I think that's more likely because his popularity is now in free fall. His polling has plummeted to an average below 30 percent. That's something that no new governing party has managed in over 40 years, according to a pollster called Poll Base Pro. So in just 70 days, Starmer's Labour is already under the 30% mark. And this is how long it took other governments to hit the same level in past uh, in the past after general elections. So the 1993 grey man, Sir John Major, it took him 397 days to reach that level. The 1968 Wilson government, it took 664 days. The 2019 May government, it took 675 days. The 1981 Thatcher government, 676 days. The 2022 Boris Johnson government, 762 days. 2008 Brown, 1,082 days. 2004 Blair, 1,104 days. So, uh, you know, if Sir Keir Starmer's the heir to Blair, well, he ain't a very good one. And it, he mm. is deeply unpopular already. Uh, and they've made a lot of stupid mistakes. They are, they are just not very good at politics. And we were all told that they were, and that actually Sir Keir Starmer was going to, you know, really boost Labour's chances and opportunities and be in power for the next, I don't know, until I'm in a retirement home. Evidently, bloody not. And I'm delighted mm -hmm. to see it, I've got to say. But it just proves yeah. everything we've 
saying for the last, you know, God knows how many years to be right. We, we knew, I mean, people who were in the political sphere understand that these lot are grifters. We, we know that they'll do anything for a bit of extra cash and they're selling out their own values at a rapid rate. They don't even pretend to be conservative, but they tell you one thing and mean the other. And that is the most damning thing you can do in politics, because as you quite, quite correctly said earlier, the public don't forget. And thankfully, this is all online. It's all online. It's not going anywhere. There's a record of this cronyism. They're going to have they're, mm. they're going to have absolute field day, the public in the next election. Field day. All right. Yeah, I uh, think there will be a snap in action. I really do think I don't think they will make it to 2029. I, I, I will bet on that, actually. Yeah. I don't I, think I, this I, government is going to make it to 2029. I, 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 I really don't think so. I think the government will, but I think Keir Starmer might, might, uh, might exactly. find himself But then we'll probably end up with, better the devil you know, right? The grass ain't always greener on the other side. We'll end up with some Labour psycho in power. Uh, mm. And uh, I'll be in a gulag. Uh, but Richard says, remember, Labour only won 34% of this vote to start with. Yep. Exactly. Very good mm. point. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.